Would you like to make your own delicious sodas at home? Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at phosphoric acid and how to add that bite to your soda. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. So here on WTF, every week Scott and I, we cover a really interesting ingredient or technique that you may not have seen before, and we'll give you some recipes to help you get started. So if you like what you see here, remember to subscribe, ring the bell, so you can get our fresh content that comes out every Tuesday. And today we're going to be talking about phosphoric acid, which, uh, it's not as scary as it may sound at first, so we're going to cover what it does and how do you use it and make a delicious cocktail with it, which I'm excited about. So Scott, what is phosphoric acid? Phosphoric acid is just like any acid, it's just a, it's a very powerful acid. It, what it does is when you add it to a soda, it gives that nice kind of stinging effect. Uh, think about when you have Coca-Cola or something mm -hmm. like that, you have that really nice acidity to it, and that's what phosphoric acid does. And you mentioned the it's not as scary as it may seem. It's there's just because there is a warning label on it because it can be, you know, if you put it onto uh, your skin or whatnot, it might just be an irritant. So you may have to just rinse it off with uh, ample water, but that's about it. And we wouldn't suggest going and uh, taking a sip of it. Right. But mm -hmm. when you add it to foods and dilute it's completely fine it's completely safe okay and you just mentioned doing sodas uh, is that the most common application for it? are there other uses people could potentially do that's the most common that's the, mm -hmm. the one that you're gonna see for phosphoric acid uh, it could just be used as an acid in many different things but mm -hmm. this is the one this is the most common that you're gonna use it's just for soda right and yeah. if you do want to use it for a soda what do you recommend for um, what step do you add it in how much ratios how do you how do people get started so I add it just right at the beginning when I'm making my syrup mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the ratio is between 0.25% and 1%. So this soda that we're making today, uh, we want it to be a bit more acidic because we are doing a frozen style, almost like a, a Slurpee mm. that we're making. So uh, we want it to be a bit more acidic so you get that punch the whole way through. Uh, you can also make a regular soda out of this. You can just add you know, five to one parts of water to mm. the syrup and then make a, a regular soda. It's just like a nice, bright, vibrant soda because we're making an orange soda here today. So. Okay, and that's exciting. And it brings me back to maybe a few episodes ago uh, we did episode 151 it was on gum arabic and in that episode we mm -hmm. did several different types of sodas yes um, but dough sodas did not have phosphoric acid in it can you maybe uh, explain like what is the difference between a soda with and without phosphoric acid so with those sodas we did like a sweet potato a grape and a uh, of course, now I'm blanking. A sweet is it potato, strawberry? grape, and uh, yeah, go. no, it's an agua fresca. That's so okay. it's a watermelon That's and right. lime mm -hmm. soda. So those already have uh, a lot of acid in them already, and we wanted to t have them taste very natural. So we did, you know, malic and citric acids for those. Mm -hmm. uh, for this, I want it to taste more like uh, a store bought kind of bright soda. So we add phosphoric acid. Right, to it's it. got that like punch to yeah, it. Yeah, okay. it's got a bit of like almost a, a tingly like a burn but in, in a positive way. Right, so if you love Coke or yeah, Pepsi if you or like, Yeah, those. exactly. Okay. Yeah, so if you do want to check out the other sodas, and um, so Gum Arabic number 151, the link will be in the description below, so you can check that out at your convenience. Mm -hmm. And some people may be wondering why are we not adding Gum Arabic to this recipe. Is mm -hmm. I'm using a, a fruit juice concentrate, so it's already thick, uh, and I find that that gives it a really kind of uh, creamy mouthfeel and also for the Slurpee that we're doing we want it to be a bit more loose so okay. uh, so I didn't want to add any more you know uh, thickener or anything to it because right. of what we're doing at the end uh, it's kind of like a frozen soda so okay that's good to know so why don't we jump into maybe your demo and kind of like what are we do what are we making today so like we said it's just a, an orange soda base so we're making orange soda syrup so I have uh, some concentrate here that's just a basic frozen concentrate you can get at any grocery store. Yeah. And we did make a full uh, Instagram video of this, so uh, we'll be able to see the entire process from beginning to end on our Instagram at Modernist Pantry. And go. then sugar, because it's a soda, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of sugar uh, that goes into it. But remember, this is just a, uh, a syrup at this point. We're going to be diluting it with uh, a lot of water. Right. So you're not putting that entire bowl of sugar into your body all at <laughs> exactly, once. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, about 100 grams of this syrup 
will go into 500 grams and that's uh, more than enough soda then for two people. Mm -hmm. Right, so, and this makes about 900 grams total in the recipe. Okay. So I'm gonna add in our flavorings right now. We have uh, flavor drops here. So this is our base kind of orange uh, flavoring. So I'm gonna add about 20 of them. Okay. So we really wanna kind of punch up that orange flavor. Right. So and that's. And this is our culinary crystals flavor drop, which yep. is a super concentrated flavoring. Yes. So if you're wondering what the little vowel is. Yeah, so when you add about 20 of that, you're going to get a, a big bright orange flavor. And then mm -hmm. we also have Alice and the Magician, they make elixirs, right? And this is really nice because it's a bunch of different citrus fruits. Mm -hmm. and you can get the benefit of all of them. So grapefruit, lime, and then also wild orange. And this is called Citrus Orchard. So this, I really like to add just right at the, uh, the beginning here. You can kind of allow it to, so about five or six drops mm -hmm. because we are you know, adding a lot of flavor to this. And then at the end, we can spritz it with a little bit more of the orange blossom or the citrus blossom yeah, uh, so spray. So, And the elixir is also like a flavoring, but it's kind of, I, I guess in my, I feel like it's going to add complexity to it, right? Because yes. it has all those different citrus notes and not just mm -hmm. the orange. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, so we have the concentrate, which is a, a big orange flavor. I tried to do this with just orange juice, fresh orange juice. Mm -hmm. I found that this had the most well, it's concentrated, so right. of course it's yeah. gonna be the most orange flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way I didn't have to add any extra water. I can just use the concentrate and then add some extra flavorings. So we're just gonna heat this up. And then once it starts to take on that sugar, mm -hmm. it'll be good. And then I can add in my phosphoric acid now. Okay, and, and how much go. phosphoric acid is, and it looks like a really tiny amount. So the thing about phosphoric acid is that it's, it's weight. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a very small amount. So its molecular weight is very high. So this right here is an extremely heavy one liter <laughs> compared to most things. You can see yes. it's extremely heavy. So that was actually about uh, nine grams. For this recipe, it's about 1%. Mm -hmm. But as you saw, it was maybe like five or six drops that right. came out of there. So yeah. it's an extremely heavy uh, ingredient. Okay, so don't be heavy handed with your phosphoric yes, acid. Always measure it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's gonna be the best way to do it because it, not that it's going to hurt you or anything like that, mm -hmm. but it's going to be too acidic and it's going to be unpleasant to, to drink. So you want to make sure that you add the correct amount. Okay. So as this heats up, we just need to bring it up to just before simmer. Once that sugar is melted, uh, then we can take it, cool it off and make, um, make our cocktail out of it. Okay. So what I did here is I took it, I put it, or I took some of the syrup, I put it into a blender mm -hmm. with ice, orange vodka, and um, then I froze it. So I basically just made almost like a frozen margarita, okay. right? And I took it and I put it into this whipping siphon and I charged it with CO2. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, like soda charge. That's the, the gas that's found in like Coca-Cola and all those different mm -hmm. types of sodas. And those have really large bubbles. So what we're gonna see after I give it a good shake, right? This should be slightly frozen. And I'm gonna let all the gas out of this. And what we're making is like a kind of fancy orange creamsicle uh, cocktail here. Okay. Once all this gas comes out. Right. And I just charged this twice, so. Okay. And I know, there, ooh, we, go. there we go. Sometimes hmm. that happens. And I know that um, if you haven't used whipping siphons before, we did an episode all about that. So yep. that's number 152. The link will be in, des in the description below. <laughs> And, um, and there you can kind of learn all the differences and benefits of whipping siphons along with the difference between an N2O charge and a CO2 charge, which we're using yes. here today, and why you don't want to mix up those two. So if you're not already familiar with whipping siphons, I uh, highly recommend clicking over to that episode just to get a little bit more about it. Yes, and we're just waiting for the gas to come out of this. Remember, it's very carbonated. So you always want to make sure, especially for this, so the gas is completely out. Mm -hmm. Now I can take the top off. And like I said, it's frozen, so. Right, and why is it important that you get all the gas out, aside from the fact that you won't be able to open it? So sometimes you, yeah, you won't be able to open it mm -hmm. if it's too pressurized, but even sometimes if you don't get all the gas out, you'll get to this point and it'll start to flood out the sides here. Okay. So we'll make sure that we're good. Mm -hmm. Yep, nothing's coming out the sides because we made that mistake when we were doing our testing. <laughs> and we poured okay. into the glass, we turned back and it's everywhere. <laughs> So I'm gonna take this glass okay. and I'm just gonna fill it. Oh, 
uh, right here. You can see those bubbles coming up, but it is still frozen. Yep. And that's the orange portion of our uh, cocktail here. In Ooh, this whipping and it's segment. it's rising. Yes, it's rising, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. In here, we have a little bit of that orange vodka still because we want it to carry all the way through the entire cocktail. Mm -hmm. Water, sugar, and then fresh uh, vanilla. So vanilla beans scraped added to it. Okay. And then a little bit of foam magic because mm -hmm. we made a nice creamy foam without having to add cream okay. to the cocktail. And before I do that, I'm just going to give a quick spritz on the glass of this uh, citrus blossom um, uh, Alice in the Magician spray. Mm -hmm. So that's just going to add even more. You, if you were here, uh, <laughs> you could smell it. It has like a really nice citrusy aroma. Yeah. So when, when um, Aaron from Alice and the Magician was here, we did mm -hmm. an episode all about the Alice in, and the Magician products. And the basic like 30 second version of <laughs> that entire episode is that, you know, when you're having a cocktail, aroma is often a missing component yes. of it, which is why people put things like basil and whatever into their glass. But with this, you're adding all that nose feel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if nose feel is a word, <laughs> but you know, but I think we all know that like smell retro to nasal. Hue. So yeah. you, okay. you, you <laughs> taste sometimes with the, with your, um, with your nose. So all, all sorts of flavors can come out there while, you know, sugar, salt, and all that is on your tongue, but all like the aromas are all in the nose. So, uh, we're just adding more and more levels of the citrus into this. Well said, Scott. <laughs> I, just I got you. Nose I, feel. <laughs> nose feels. <laughs> Can we make a t-shirt of that? <laughs> All right, so right here I have the, the vanilla cream. And I'm just gonna pump Ooh. it out. You can see it's very creamy. It looks like cream, but it is just uh, a water base. And you can see all those great, beautiful black speckles from the fresh vanilla bean oh, yeah, that we right. did. Mm -hmm. And you can see our syrup here. So it's a nice, beautiful syrup. It's starting to clarify a little bit, which is nice. You can do it like this. And the nice thing about doing foam magic as opposed to other foaming agents is that you get uh, a lot more stability. So whereas with a lot of other foaming agents, the, um, the foam will start dissipating right away. But yes. with this product, you know, with foam magic, it's going to stay here for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take a sip, Jane? I would love to take a sip. Second drink of the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I gave you a straw. Oh, <laughs> I was trying to like get past all the foam. Excuse me. I had a spoon for that. Ew. Oh, it's so good. It's really, really refreshing. Like, um, it doesn't even drink like an alcohol, really. No. It's just like, yeah, it's, it tastes like cream soda, not cream soda, orange soda <laughs> with a cream topping on it. So I might dig it's in there. It's super nice. Get a little bit. Mm. But yeah, you get the vanilla, you get the orange, and all the aroma from the uh, elixir and the, mm -hmm. the uh, aromatic spray. Mm -hmm. So. It's better than the last one I made, so <laughs> sometimes yes. I amaze myself. It's uh, true. <laughs> and kind of what's really nice about this is that you it's it looks fairly simple, but there's a lot of like complexity of flavor behind yeah. it, which you it's hard to like obviously see it, um, but once you're tasting it and you're smelling it, you really get all that information in there. And with the phosphoric acid, it's got that nice bubble, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So, so I think it's better than orange sodas that you buy in the store. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so you can get this full recipe on our blog, which will be in the link in the description below. So you can obviously get started really quickly as well as, you know, can they substitute in like their other flavors, make their own version of this? Yeah, you can absolutely do that. You can take any of our soda recipes and, and take out, you know, the orange in this or the sweet potato or another one and add mm -hmm. in whatever you think would be good there and their base recipes. So you could just take them and that's how you can learn how to use uh, gum arabic. That's mm -hmm. how you can learn how to use phosphoric acids. You take them, you make them your own. So we're totally fine with that. And if you do, you know, drop us a link to it on uh, Instagram in the comments below, wherever you want to. Yeah, we love hearing from you about what you come up with. It's always super exciting. Um, and thank you for watching. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wei. And I'm Scott Guerin. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And turn that bell on because it notifies you when we drop a new video. If you like any of today's recipes, go to blog.modernistpantry.com. There you'll find recipes, ask a chefs, and tips and tricks, and more. And if you have a friend who you think would like this video, share it with them. 
And to get any of these great ingredients, just go to our website, www.modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the test kitchen, helping you create memorable and magical experiences. <laughs> <laughs>